In this fourth video about nonlinear regression, we will discuss logistic growth and how to estimate the parameters of the logistic growth model based on some data. Suppose that we will grow some bacteria on a plate. In reality, these kinds of plates can host millions of bacteria, but to simplify the illustrations in this video, I will use only a few bacteria. In this example, we therefore start with only two bacteria. The bacteria will double every hour, which means that after one hour we will have four bacteria, and after two hours we will have eight bacteria, after three hours 16 bacteria and so forth. After nine hours there will be more than 1000 bacteria on the plate if they double every hour. The problem is that there is not enough space left for new bacteria, and the plate will run out of nutrition, which is required for growth. This means that our simple model for exponential growth cannot be used to explain this type of growth, because the population will just continue to grow forever according to this model, even if the plate cannot fit more than 1000 bacteria. This is why we need some kind of S-shaped curve to model that the growth rate is reduced over time. The following differential equation can be used to model such type of growth, where y is the number of bacteria, r is the exponential growth rate, and k is the so-called carrying capacity, which in our example is the maximum number of bacteria that can live on the plate. This differential equation describes the rate of growth. Suppose that we would only have two bacteria on the plate, and that the carrying capacity is 1000. That would mean that this term is approximately equal to zero, which means that the value inside the brackets is approximately equal to one. By simplifying this equation, we will end up with the equation for simple exponential growth. This means that when there are relatively few bacteria, the population would grow approximately like the exponential growth model. When there is no competition for food or space, the bacteria will divide at maximum speed. If we instead have 500 bacteria, which is half of the maximum carrying capacity, the value within the brackets is 0 0.5, which means that the bacteria divide at half maximum speed if we assume that no death takes place. However, since the curve is steepest here, this means that the total population grows at maximum speed. If we assume that no cell death takes place, the number of new cells that are produced in the culture per hour is at its maximum here, because there are so many cells that divide at this point. But note that single cells divide at maximum speed when they have plenty of food and space. When the number of bacteria is equal to the carrying capacity, the value inside the brackets is equal to zero, which means that the growth rate will be equal to zero. This means that the cells no longer divide, or that the number of new cells that are produced is equal to the number of cells that die. If we log the y-axis, like this, it is easier to identify the exponential phase of the growth because that is where the curve is straight and points up. The stationary phase is reached once the population no longer grows. If you solve this differential equation, we'll get the following equation, where y0 is the initial number of bacteria in this case. Let's move the equation up here. We'll now fit the exponential growth model to some data. Suppose that we will grow tumor cells on a culture plate. We have initially added 200 tumor cells to the plate and measure the number of cells over time like this. We can estimate the parameters by using the free statistical software R, where we plug in the data and make a nice plot. Based on this plot, it seems like a reasonable initial estimate of K should be 10,000. Since we know that we started with 200 cells, we do not need to estimate y0. We instead keep this as a fixed parameter. Since it takes about 15 hours for the population to double in the beginning where we have exponential growth, 
an appropriate initial guess of the growth rate is about 0 0.046. Since we know that we started with 200 cells, we fix the value y0 to 200, which means that we will not estimate this parameter. We then use the NLS function to estimate the parameters, where we plug in the equation and the data, and set the initial guesses of r and k to 0 0.046 and 10,000. If we run this code, we will get the following output. We see that the carrying capacity k has been estimated to about 10,000 and that the maximum growth rate is 0 0.059 per hour, which means that the population approximately increases by 6% each hour in the exponential phase. Once we have estimated the parameters, we can add the fitted curve to the plot from the lecture about exponential growth and doubling time. We know that we can estimate the doubling time, like this. This means that it takes about 11.6 hours for the population of cells to double in the exponential phase. Assuming that no cells die, we can think of this value as the average time it takes for a cell to divide. A range of different mathematical functions has been proposed for logistic growth, where this is another type. This parameter corresponds to the carrying capacity, whereas this parameter corresponds to the reciprocal of the growth rate. An x mid is the so-called inflection point of the curve, which is the time point where we have maximum growth of the population. Remember that individual cells grow at maximum speed when there is no competition for food and space. If we plot how fast the population of tumor cells is growing over time, we can for example see that the population increases by about 80 cells per hour at the time point 40 hours. The parameter x min therefore represents the time when we have maximum growth of the population, which is the point when the derivative of the function stops increasing, or when the second derivative is equal to zero. The slope of this curve is therefore highest at the time point that corresponds to the x min value. At this point, the population is growing by about 167 cells per hour. For this type of equation, R has an inbuilt self starting function that will calculate appropriate starting values by itself. If we use this function, we therefore do not need to enter any initial guesses of the starting values. These are the estimated parameters. We will get the same estimated parameters if we use this function. These two values are identical. And 1 divided by 14.74 is equal to 0 0.0678. If you plug in these values in the equation and set t to 0, y will be equal to the estimated value y0. Finally, note that there is a range of different growth models that can be used. For example, we may here compare the logistic growth model with the Gompertz model by calculating the ASC value as we did in the second video about nonlinear regression. Then we select the model which has the lowest ASC value. This was the end of this basic video about logistic growth. Thanks for watching.